A Dream of Fair Women by George Graham Curry, read for LibriVox.org by phone. One night, while on my couch I was reclining, while just dozing, lightly dozing on my bed, I was treated to a vision so refining, that at first I feared the sight would turn my head, for my eyes there passed along in slow succession all the fair ones who are famed in days of yore, those enchantresses and charmers whose chief mission was to make proud, haughty men the sex adore. Goddess Flora led the van bedecked with flowers, which she strewed on every side along her way, while her smiles and rosy blushes fell like showers, and refreshed my heated brain like scented spray. Arm in arm and tripping nimbly o'er the rosebuds, came fair Dian and Euterpe on apace, while Hygeia followed close upon their footsteps, as they started off for pleasure in the chase. Quite enamoured of their healthful grace and vigour, my senses for the moment seemed benumbed, till upon the scene appeared another figure, when my heart untouched as yet at last succumbed. It was Venus, goddess fair of love and beauty, who, so perfect, bosom, sonsy, coy and sweet, had at length my heart in earnest taken captive, and reduced me to a suppliant at her feet. But alas, the siren goddess left me mourning, the procession of enchantment still went on, and my wounded heart at first within me burning, cooled at length until it joyed that she was gone. For with sober, stately tread came great Minerva, the patroness of science and of art, and the smile of recognition that she gave me healed completely my lacerated heart. Well attended soon came Juno, queen of heaven, the fair guardian of married women's bliss. Being single, I the shoulder cold was given, which at first I felt inclined to take amiss. But Erato, who delights to honour lovers, and who sympathises with them in their wrongs, happened by, most opportunely, I imagined, and sang back my peace of mind with tender songs. Then methought that fairest Helen, Troy's perdition, followed hard love's pretty muse upon the scene and at once I understood the fierce condition in which Paris, Priam's son, must once have been. And when Dido made her debut in the vision, I could swear that by the great eternal plan not a mortal ever lived except in fiction who could spurn such loveliness and yet be man. Next came Beatrice, whom Dante loved so dearly, with Laura, Petrarch's Laura, by her side till quite stricken by their sweetness I sincerely bemoaned with all Italia that they died. Then Shakespeare's lovely fair ones next paraded, and I recognized distinctly as they passed, soft Ophelia, sweet Portia, good Cordelia, loving Juliet, not the least if mentioned last. After this my dozing memory seemed to wander, though the ladies loitered still upon the scene, but among the last I noticed I remember, was the shapely form of Burns's bonny Jean. When, however, my Zatoba stood before me, all my frame in liquid bliss she seemed to steep, and the vision of fair women flitted from me, as in ecstasy I sighed myself to sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.